And, you know, I, I, most of you probably, if you've been here for a while, kind of know my story. I, I got saved right before my 16th birthday. And, you know, I, I kind of started on this quest. I mean, when I got saved, for me, it was a life change. I mean, it wasn't something I said something and, you know, there was no transformation in my life. I mean, I was all in. I didn't understand what all in meant, but my heart was all in. And, and one of the things I started doing immediately was starting to read the Bible. And up to that point in my life, you know, I, I read some, but I didn't really understand it. And then all of a sudden I got saved and because the Holy Spirit's on the inside of me, I start reading the Bible and, and it starts being illuminated. I start understanding some things and I really started with the Gospels. You know, and I start with John, and I encourage people first get say it's a great book to start. And I read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and, and 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 I noticed something. I noticed all the miracles. I, I noticed the power of God that moved. And, and 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 let me let me just start off by this message by saying this: at TFC, there's two things we believe really strongly. I'm, I'm not talking about families and serving. I'm talking about our relationship with God. Number one, it's a relationship. It's not about knowing God. It's about knowing God. All right? It's a big difference. You can have information, but to know him. And the other thing is the power of God. Now, let, let me say something about the power of God that I think we have to understand. I think sometimes we look at the power of God, and it has to be spectacular. But can I tell you, it's not always spectacular, but it's always supernatural. And, and now I, I believe in the spectacular, don't get me wrong. But sometimes we, we make such a big deal of the spectacular, and if we're not careful, we're even chasing it. And listen, the supernatural power of God is, is a thing that moves in our life, that changes, that transforms us, that changes our families, that changes the way we think. That, that causes us to have a dream and a vision for our life. I mean, that, that's the power of God. Then I also believe the power of God moves to heal our bodies, to set people free, you know, to break bondages. And, and listen, if church isn't, the, is, is, if that's not church, then we're missing the boat. Amen? Come on, I'm preaching better than I'm getting amens here. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God in your life. Let me, let me slow down here. Get you on board with me. You know, I, I, Wednesday night, I, I was in the foyer just greeting people, and I had to get to the youth service because I was, I was kind of viewing that. And I got stopped by three people on the way and every person had a catastrophic event in their life. And I, I don't mean like a little thing. I'm talking catastrophic. And listen, I, I want you to, to hear this today. You're here in this place. God wants to get in your life and he wants to radically change it. And if you're going through a catastrophe, I'm not telling you that everything's going to be roses with God, but he'll get you to the other side. And he'll get you to the other side victoriously. <laughs> but, but there's something that's very important for us to understand. And, and because when I first started reading the Bible, I didn't understand this. And, and, and so much of church teaches this. And at TSC, we do not. And I don't believe the Bible teaches this. When the power of God, it is not a random act. Let, let me say that again. The, when God moves in the miraculous, however that is, whether it's healing your body, whether it's transforming your, your mind, wh whatever it is, it isn't random. And there's a lot of people who think it's random and they think, oh, you know what? Man, I'm just praying that maybe I'll be one of those randoms. Can, can, here, here's what I found out when I read the scripture. See, the Bible's our foundation. Here's what I read. That I, I saw where Jesus is dealing with people and he said that the reason they got their miracle was because of their faith. He said to a leper... You know, he says, you're healed by your faith. He said to the woman with the issue of blood, 
that you're made whole because of your faith. She didn't, he didn't even know she was there. He said to the blind man, according to your faith, be it unto you. And, and all of a sudden I began to realize we've been teaching in the church that God's like up, you know, heaven with this big wheel of fortune. And there's Vanna White, the angel, standing by the wheel of fortune. And she's spinning it and your name comes up and goes, God, God says, well, I think I'll move in just a sovereign way for this person today. That's not what's going on in heaven. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God looks to and fro throughout the earth for a person he can show himself strong in. That means, guess what? We can see the power of God move in our life if we learn how to exercise our faith. And, and, and I want you to, to know what we exercise our faith in. The, those people in the Bible, and, and, and I gave you three, but there's about three or four others that reference their faith as the reason they got healed. Th there is something they believed in. D do you know what it was? See, they didn't have the New Testament, but Jesus said this when he came to the earth. I, I want us to look at Luke 4, 18. And this is what Jesus said. Now, look, he says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. The power of God was on Jesus. Guess what? The power of God dwells in you if you receive Christ as your Savior. And, and, and look, why was that spirit on him? Because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So they heard this. I believe everywhere Jesus went, he talked this. He preached this. They heard it. And they, they believed it. And guess what it did? It allowed the potential for all these things to happen. Now, why am I saying this? Because I, I'm, I'm going to be real honest. I, I feel like right now our church is a little bit of a low ebb. What, what do I mean by that? Early in the year, when I got up in front, I felt like the faith in this place was strong. And lately, I, I feel like it's been lagging. And what that usually means is people are going through stuff. People are dealing with stuff. Maybe some of us have even become frustrated because we've been believing God for a while and we haven't seen things change. I'm here to tell you, don't give up. I'm here to tell you, God's faithful. I'm here to tell you that there is incredible potential for you. I, I, I want to read this scripture, Ephesians 3.20, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. I love this. Listen to this. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you. All right? And accomplish all of this. Now listen to this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request your most unbelievable dream and ex exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Man, that, that should get you excited. Now, now, understand this. As we talk about this, and I want to make this really clear, we're, we're not saying God's a slot machine. You don't put in your prayer, pull, pull the lever, and poop, here it comes out. But, but what God is talking about is his faithfulness when we give our life to him. And, and, and what we've done so many times in talking about giving our life to him is that we talk about all the things we're not supposed to do. And, and you go to churches and you have this whole list of don'ts. See, I like to talk, there, there are things you're not supposed to do. But let me, let me tell you something. Here, here's what I found in my life. Like, I, I, I've lost like 20 pounds since Christmas. And it wasn't focusing on not eating. It was focusing on eating the right things. Right? See, I didn't sit around and go, oh, I can't have ice cream. Oh, I can't have cheesecake. No, I just, I found things that I liked with well, alternatives. Let me tell you, God's an alternative to sin, and he's a better alternative to, than sin. 
And, and, and what we have to do, listen, we have to reject sin, but we have to grab a hold and take him at his word. See, when we go grab a hold and take him out of his word, here's what you find out. God's so good, you don't want anything that's the opposite of him. But we also have to understand that that's a lifestyle. It's not an event. It's not a one-time prayer thing. It's not, you know, hocus pocus and watch God move. It's the way you live. And, and, and there's a particular person in the Bible that, that I want to talk about today. And her story is amazing. And we all know who she is. And, and if your background's Catholic, you really know who she is. She's Mary. All right? And, 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 and I'll be real honest with you, you know, that some of the teaching about Mary has been in error. We don't pray to Mary. Okay, I make that really clear. But, but I do want you to understand that she's a very important figure in the Bible, obviously. And, and she was an incredible lady. And she had incredible faith. And, and the story goes, you know, that she's a, she's a single woman, but she's engaged to Joseph. And an angel appears. And, and this, this is not just any angel. This is Gabriel. This is one of the archangels. You know, th this is, I mean, this is a high tier angel. Appears and says, you know, Mary, you are blessed. And, and you're going to have a son. And, and he'll be the most high God. And Mary's first response is this. How can that happen? I'm a virgin. Okay, I mean, legitimate question. I don't have, I'm not married, you know, I'm, I have never known a man. And the angel says, don't worry about it. That's his, my paraphrase. I don't think Gabriel actually said those words, but you get the idea. And, and, and he makes a statement. He says, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And, and his power will cover you. And then what I want to read is Mary's response. But before I read Mary's response. Let, let, let me say this. There are a thousand questions that Mary should have had in the natural. Like, how's Joseph going to respond to this? And if Joseph doesn't take and accept me, I'm a single mom that's pregnant. And in that day, oh, that was horrible. You were not accepted. You were cast out. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm supposed to raise the son of God? How, how do I do that? I mean, could you imagine a flood of questions that come? And, and here's what I really want to deal with and I want to talk about right now is that so many times when we hear the word of God, the first thing we do is question. The first thing we do is what if? Why not? How come I don't see anything yet? How come this? How come that? And, and, and let me tell you something. It's in the questioning that you fail. See, Pastor, are you asking me to, to have blind faith towards God? He, absolutely. But, but see, this, well, I'm not talking about blind faith because we're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What you're doing is you're, you're, you're not listening to your mind, but you're listening to your heart. If you'll be honest with yourself and if you'll be in tune, you'll understand when God begins to pull on you. You'll begin to understand when he's tugging on you. And see, our response needs to be the same response that Mary had. Look at it in Luke 138. This is what Mary said. She didn't ask any questions. She didn't ask if Joseph was on board. She didn't ask anything. Here's what she said. Look at how simple. And Mary responded, this is amazing. No, excuse me, wrong, wrong translation. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Now let's go what she says. Let it be to me according to your word. Now, if you want to know the place of faith, that's it. It's that simple. See, we complicate it. Well, I need this person to pray for me. I need this to happen. I need that to happen. Oh, if I can just talk to Pastor John. Listen, grab a hold of the promise of God and make the statement every day of your life, according to your word, let it be done for me. According to your word. I know what the doctor says. 
I know what the circumstances say. I know what, you know, my, my situation is. But according to your word, not according to the doctor, not according to the circumstances, not according to how I feel, but according to your word. Now, the whole, because she said it like that, the Holy Spirit came on her and she became pregnant. And, and, and Mary's response is she sings a song of faith. I mean, she's praising God. She's dancing. She's excited because God has moved in her life. She has a divine plan for her life. And that's the ultimate for all of us. But, but let me tell you this. Because this is so important. I want you to hear this. And this will be the rest of our message. That Mary didn't just become pregnant with a son she became pregnant with a promise. And, 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 and you have to understand that believing God is like pregnancy. <laughs> the women are real excited about this. <laughs> it's spiritual pregnancy instead of natural pregnancy. And let me tell you that if she wouldn't have become pregnant with the word, she wouldn't have become pregnant with a son. She became pregnant with the word so she could become pregnant with a son. And see, and when you have to understand that when you take and believe God, see, we're always looking for instant, you know, we want instantaneous. It happens. I love it. But can I be honest? It is rare. Especially, now listen. I don't have time to get into this. Maybe in October when we do a TFC Nights, I'll get into it more. But what we find is instant usually happens in areas where the gospel is being presented. It can happen, and we've seen it happen here. But honestly, for the most part, a lot of what you're going to receive from God is a process. You plant the seed, you water the seed, the seed grows up, and in due time, the seed produces a harvest. And so when you want the power of God and supernatural transformation to happen, what it is is it's every day taking care of the seed. Every day, according to his word, be it unto me. Every day. And, and, and Nikki, a couple Wednesday nights ago, said this. And when she said it, it went off on the inside of me. You have to embrace the suffering. See, the, let, me, let me read a verse. Okay, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at um, John 16, verse 20. Jesus is speaking here, and this is what he says. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Look at verse 21. Verse 21 explains what happens to all of us when we believe God. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her cho a joy that a child is born into the world. There is pain is part of the process of believing God. When you look at natural pregnancy, right? Think back, ladies. Men, I know, men, you didn't feel the pain, but you got to... You did experience it, believe me. I, I, we'll talk about that in a second. But, but there, there's this joy. It's like, I'm pregnant, especially if it's the first time. I'm pregnant. You have no idea what you're in for. You're just excited. We're going to be parents. And you rejoice and you share it on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, and Twitter and all those different things. I know it's wrong. I did it on purpose. All right. And... and you, you sit there, you know, you tell the family and you go to Taco Pelinque and celebrate. Come on, we're, we're going to have a baby. You have a gender reveal party, all that wonderful stuff. But then something is happening inside the woman. I mean, she'll be changed forever because something's growing. You know, and, and, you know, the stretch marks, right? I know, I'm sorry. And, and you know, the gas and all the different things that go along with it, you know. And, and th that nine months is not, you know, fun. And, and you know, morning sickness. Like, my wife was not built for pregnancy. She just, poor thing, 
She just isn't built. I mean, our first child, the first three months was, I mean, on the floor, in the bed, morning sickness. I mean, just terrible, right? And then, and then one, one day, she walks up to me, and she's just struggling with the whole thing. And she looks at me and says, do I look fat? <laughs> and of course, you know, being a good husband, I said, no, baby, not at all. <laughs> she starts bawling. I'm like, what? What did I do? She goes, I don't look like I'm having a baby. I'm pregnant. I don't even look like I'm having a baby. I'm like, no, I didn't say that. You know, you're trying to, you know. So the second child, she look, walks up to me and she says, do I look fat? And I said, well, in a good way, yes. Because I remembered the last one. She falls down crying. I'm fat. Oh, that's great. You know, I'm thinking the third one, she asked me if I'm fat. I said, Nah, ain't touching that one, right? But listen, spiritually, there's that incubation process. There's that pregnancy. And and, and here's what I want you guys to understand is that literally something's growing on the inside of you. But it's not physical, it's spiritual. Change is happening and, and it, it, it rocks your world. Because let me, let me tell you something. God's not just changing your body. He's changing you. He's not just changing the events of your life. He's changing you. And, and all of a sudden, the enemy's coming in, and he's putting pressure, and, and he's trying to get us off of our faith. And, and it's that awkward time where you feel like nothing's happening, but you say, according to your word, let it be unto me. Yes. It's when people around you are going, you know, you're stupid. What, you know, I know... Nine people have died from that, and you're believing God. You're just ridiculous. And you go, it doesn't matter what you say. According to your word, be it unto me. See, and it's during that process that it's awkward that you're having spiritual stress marks. You're, you're, you're feeling some spiritual gas, some spiritual morning sickness. There's some days you get up, you're like, I don't feel like believing God today. But you pull yourself together, and like Mary, you begin to rejoice. You begin to thank God that his word is more real than what you see. It's more real than what you feel. And you declare that according to the word of God, let it be done unto me. Let me say something that is so important right here. And just get real with you. See, traveling ministers come in, they drop their bomb, and they leave. Pastors have to walk people through things. And, and let me tell you how you get to the other side. You keep doing the word. Yeah, but I don't see anything. Doesn't matter, just keep doing the word. Yeah, but it really hurts, keep doing the word. See, you, see there, there, there's something on the inside of you that has to change. There's something on the, in your heart that says, I would I'd rather die than quit. And, and some of you are like, I, I don't really want to do that. Well, let me tell you something. Then There's only so much you can receive from God. But if you really want God to move in your life, if you really want to see some transformation, if you really want to take and, and, and see God come into your life and give you a divine purpose, it takes that kind of commitment but that means you got to put the word in you. That means you got to spend time. You, you, can't, you don't just come to service and kind of go, let's get through this. Hurry up. I want to go to Luby's. <laughs> that means, man, you're committed. You're all in. You know, it's funny how we get committed to things. We'll, we'll commit to fishing. We'll go all in. In the windy days, the bad days. We don't catch anything. We don't quit. We just keep on going. But when it comes to spiritual things, we're just wimps. Oh, I, you know, God loved me. He wouldn't let me go through this. God does love you. That's why he's allowing you to go through this. So you become something great in him. And, and let, let me really wrap, kind of begin to drive this home. The last part of your pregnancy is the hardest. Right that last month, you know, man, start nesting. Everything's got to be just right. 
Poor Terry, you know, she's so small and stomach was sticking out. She was just having trouble walking. We had, it was during the time we had bing bag chairs and we didn't have much money. So bing bag chairs was our living room furniture or some of it. And so I'd walk by and she'd be by, by the bing bag chair and I'd just push her in it. She couldn't get out. It was hilarious. <laughs> she'd be like. But there's this thing where you know, see, let, 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 me, let me say this. If you do this right, even though you may not see it coming to pass right now, there's an expectation. There's an expectation. And, and I believe that you should praise God enough every day so that you have a strong expectation for the things you're believing for. But when it gets near the end, man, usually the trials escalate. The, the intensity of darkness comes at you, but so does your expectation. And I remember when we were expecting our first one. She's on the first row here. And, and man, we, you know, we knew it was about time. I mean, we could feel it. You know, and, and this scripture really, you know, having that baby's tough. And, and for us, it was a little tougher. Because we, we had paid everything up front, didn't have any insurance. We were doing the natural birthing process. Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And we went through the Bradley method, which nobody's ever heard of before. I don't know why I did it. And, and the whole idea is that when my wife is going through contractions, I'm supposed to give her a peaceful picture. Think of the birds, the trees, <laughs> bubbling brock, you know. And, and, and uh, so it was, there was ice and snow on the ground. Obviously, we were not living here. All right. We were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, ice and snow on the ground. I had fallen off a roof that day, slightly fractured my elbow. I get the call. It's time. And Danae decided to use, do number two in the womb so we couldn't do the natural birthing thing. And so they hooked Terry up to this thing. They put her in the, you know, in the whole, um, you know, birthing center. And, and it's like in the afternoon, I don't know, late, early afternoon or late morning, I don't remember. And, and she starts having contractions and they're going off the graph. And they're happening every three or four minutes, five minutes, but she's not dilating. And every time she has a contraction, I lean over and I said, baby, think of the birds. <laughs> now, ladies, you... You know what contraction feels like? Somebody's tense. Don't you want to just smack them right now? I mean, uh, you know, think of the birds and the trees and the babbling brook. Think of West Virginia, the Elk River. And, and it worked for about 10 hours. Middle of the night, they just left, let her go. She's still having contractions. Man, she's screaming. And about 3 in the morning, I, I lean down. I'm, I'm in a sling. I mean, get this picture, man. I'm half asleep. Think of the birds. I wasn't doing a very good job. I don't know how many times I'd said that. And at 3 a.m., my, my wife, five, all five foot of her, grabs my collar. She pulls me next to her face. It's in between a contraction. She says, if I hear about one more bird, I will take you out. I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm not dealing, you know, if you want to take over a country, just send some pregnant women in. I mean, I'm telling you why, it's, it's intense. And, 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 and so, listen, listen, this is where it really gets good. At 6 a.m., she grabs my collar again. I'm like, I didn't say a bird. I didn't, I didn't. This is what she says to me. I'm done. I want to go home. I don't want to do this. <laughs> uh, and I'm, baby, there is no return policy on this. <laughs> and I ran to the nurse and I said, you got to do something because she's ready to quit. And, and so they finally, we had to have a C-side. They let her go a long time. And, and so we went through all of that. And I don't know, sometime in the morning, Danae is born. And, and, and this is amazing to me. And, and I, want, I want us to understand this spiritually. I... I I, I look over at my wife, and she has the baby wrapped next to her, and all the grief is gone. All that pain and ready to, you know, torch me is gone, and there's a glow on her face. Listen, it's worth waiting for. The promise, 
When God, when you get to the other side and you see God heal your body, when you see God change your kid, when you see God change your mental health, when you God see God do things, it's not just the thing changing, it's God on the inside of you. There's a glow that happens on you because you've watched God do a miracle in your life. And my wife's with that glow in her face, and, I, and I, she said this, and I still can't believe she said it. She said, looks at me and she goes, can we have another? <laughs> and I, you know, as a man, I'm like, wait, 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 just a minute. Five hours ago, you wanted to quit. Listen, I, I, I want to I minister to you today. There's some of you in this house right now, you're ready to quit. You're at that place. You're like, I'm, I'm done. It hurts so bad. Listen, I, I, I'm here to tell you that joy is right around the corner. God is faithful. I said, God is faithful. God is faithful. And, and I want to say this to every person in the house. I, I want you to hear this. If we are born again and we have God on the inside of us, then there needs to, should be an expectation that you have right now that you can't see in the natural. You see, but pastor, things are going pretty good. Well, maybe they are. But there should be an expectation. See, I have an expectation right now. You know what my expectation? Somebody asked me the other day, said, what can we pray for you for? I said, reach more people. You know what my expectation is? Churches all over the Rio Grande Valley. You know what my expectation? Going international, reaching people. So how are you going to do it? According to God's will, be it unto me. I don't know. See, there's got to come a place in your life where you just say, God, I don't understand, but I give up. See, that's that part where Jesus is going to die to self. You stop trying to figure it out. You stop trying to make it happen. And you just lift your hand and you say, God, I trust you. I believe according to your word, be it unto me. Would you stand to your feet? See, there's people in this room, you need transformation. There's other people in this room, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm asking no one to be leaving at this point. This is not a time to leave because we're ministering to people, okay? And if you've got to go out and do a, there's people that are leaving that have to go do a job. I understand that. All right, but, but listen, listen, this is super important. Let's not let this dream just be all about us. There should be an expectation in your heart, a vision for your life that's beyond you. And I want you to hear this. That's the place of happiness. That's the place of joy. The most miserable people in the world are selfish people. They want all their money for themselves, all their time for themselves. Their dream in life is to retire and be all about me. See, I'm on this earth, you're on this earth for a reason. And, and I'm, I'm just going to say it. The Spirit of God is on me. I'm just going to say it. Man, we are as a church called to reach hurting people. There are so many hurting people out there. How dare us come into this place and let it all be about us? Now, I understand. We all got stuff that we need help with, and I don't have any issue with that. But listen, we are not a church that's just about us. It's about lost and dying people. God's heart breaks for them. And he's looking for us to say, yes, according to your word, be it unto me. I'll put down my offenses. I'll put down my unhealthiness. I'll put down my petty issues. And I'll say, God, according to your word, be it unto me. Man. God, I'm going to just pray for you right now. God, I pray for every person in this room. Oh, God. If we understood how much you love us, we'd, we would just run to you. If we had understand what was available to us, we wouldn't doubt. We trust you. And there's people in this room, I know they're going through catastrophe, but God's bigger than your catastrophe. 
And in the midnight hour, when things are dark, when things don't look like they're going to come out on the other side, that's the time that you see, according to your word, be it unto me. But, it, but there's something more. You do what Mary did. You begin to sing as Paul did and Silas did. At the midnight hour, you begin to sing out about the glory of God. Father, I pray for those that are going through mega stuff in their life. And I declare, I put my faith in agreement with them that they go to the other side. That they'll be faithful and Lord, they will see your power move, see your power flow in a great way. It'll be a wonderful testimony of your power. But now, Lord, I, I, I speak to those people who God's calling. Now, now let me stop. And everybody understand this. I, right now, man, this, I'm just flowing right now. So many times we think a calling means I'm supposed to get on the platform and speak or sing. No, a calling can be all kinds of things. It could be a business. It, it, it could be a ministry, a business that helps ministry. It could be ministry that God has called you that has nothing to do with this platform. A certain group of people you're to reach to touch. And, 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 and listen, if that's you today, and, and listen, you already know what you're supposed to do, that's fine. But today you're like, man, I... And I want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, no usher looking around. This is, I don't want any, we're not counting. This is just between them and God. But you came in this place focused on you. And you feel the spirit of God is tugging on your heart and saying, I need to be more about the kingdom business. If that's you, and I'm not hesitating, I want you to put your hand up and say, that's me. Yeah, hey, hands going up all over the building. Well, and that's why the spirit of God told me to do that. Come on, put both hands up as submission to God. Father, I pray for these people with their hands lifted up. Lord, I pray for your power to fall in their life. I pray that they can never in their life be okay with settling for just natural things. But that, Father, that you arrest their spirit, that you move in a powerful way that, Lord, you make them pregnant with an expectation of incredible things in their life. That, Lord, that they will begin to say in their life, according to your word, be it unto me. Whatever that is, God, I'll stop being lazy. I'll stop putting it off. I'll stop focusing on the bad stuff. I'll stop being a victim. And I'll begin to declare, according to his word, be it unto me. That's my focus, not on the other stuff, not on the peripheral stuff. What is God saying to you? What is the thing in your heart that God's tugging on you, that he's pulling on you, that, that makes you want to cry in the middle of the night? What's that thing that's your passion? You know what? Come on. Just come on up here. I know this is different. I don't care. If that's you, just, just come on up here right, right now. Just come on up here. Just get out of your seat. Don't hesitate. If, it's, if you're new, I'm not going to bite you, I promise. All right, just, just come on up out of here real fast. I feel like I'm supposed to do this. Come on. There's a whole bunch of you. Now, now come on up. There's, and the, the ones that already know who you are, I want you to get behind them real fast. We're going to pray for them. Real fast, real fast. Come on, hurry up. Guys, you know how to pray. I don't care who it is. Just come out of this seat. You know how to pray. Come and pray for one of these guys. Just get behind them. All right? And we need some over here. Some over here in the middle. All right? So well, this is different. Yeah. Listen, no apologies at all. I, I believe in a church where God's spirit is alive. Now let's stretch out our hands towards these folks. Father, come on, just put your hand up. Would you do that? Would you just put your hand up just as a sign of surrender? Just right there where you're at. You need to make that commitment. According to your word, be it unto me. 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 Father, I thank you. I thank you. These are hearts that have felt your tug. These are hearts that are responding 
And Lord, there has to be a decision inside each heart. It's the same decision that Mary made. It's a, it is a focus on the thing that God has and, and, and ignoring all the other things. It has to be a focus. God, according to your word. According to your word. Let that thing get down deep. Let them become pregnant with it spiritually right now. Let there be an expectation. They may say, I have no idea how it could happen. Great. That means it's a God thing. Oh, man. God's telling me that there's big stuff that's being birthed in your heart right now. There's big stuff. There's big stuff. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for each and every person. I just thank you for your power to flow and to move right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. I thank you. I thank you for callings. I thank you for equipping. Lord, I thank you for it right now by your Holy Spirit. We just thank you and we praise you. We glorify you. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for this work being done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, we're going to do this a little different, okay? The people up front, you just keep praying. Don't worry about us. The rest of us, we need to do one more thing, okay? So if you can have every, every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen, if you're here today and you say, Jesus, God, I, or Pastor, I don't know that I'm right with God. I don't know that if I had to face death that I'd go to heaven. Listen, God cares about you. He loves you. He sent his son to die for you. If you're watching the boot camp and you need Jesus, you can just do this today. Listen, you don't know that you're right with God. Today, the Bible says by a decision that you make in your heart to accept what Jesus did on the earth, that he'll come into your heart, he'll forgive you, to live with you, and heaven's your eternal home. Maybe you've never asked Jesus in your heart for the first time you need to. Or maybe you're here to say, Pastor, one time I did, but I've fallen away from God and I need to come back. Listen, if you need to come to God for the first time or come back, I'm going to ask you right where you're at. Just slip up your hand. Just throw it up real high. See, that's me. Yeah, hands going up. Hands going up all over the building. That's awesome. Yeah, God's moving in this place. Anyone else? One last time. We're going to pray. All right, anybody else? All right. You can put your hands down. I'm going to ask everybody, not, not the people up front, you just keep praying, but everybody else, I'm going to lead you out in a prayer. I, I want you to take and repeat this prayer. Those folks who raise their hands, when you say these words, make that decision. He'll forgive you. Come to live inside of you, and heaven's your eternal home. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus, that he died for me. I repent of my old life, and I ask you to come into my heart and to save me right now. I receive you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. I thank you because of my confession that I am forgiven, that you live in me, that heaven's my eternal home. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen, amen. Praise God.